And welcome back to the chaos that is our game. <laughs> and welcome back. Um, last we left the intrepid adventurers of Black Book, you guys were in pursuit of the woman known as Tilde, as she had received the mark of the Miracle Maker, an artifact you are pursuing, one of 13 that you need to uh, prevent the black magician Rask from achieving his ends of collapsing the planes into one. Uh, but with the party separated, with Amanita um, in cat form, uh, tailing Tilde in her astral crawler, uh, the rest of the party was forced to make do by knocking out the four-armed wolfman on duty and taking him along into another stolen vessel. Um, That's one yeah, ult ultimately, the, the journey uh, found itself within the plane of air as both ships careened down into a pool of air energy. Um, both ships were sent tumbling, and due to some lucky rolls, both inhabitants made it out uh, without too many nicks and scrapes. Um, as it seemed that the pool of energy was directly related to a vast maelstrom that was just carving a path through uh, a floating continent in the plane of air. But using the path as a uh, connecting point, uh, you guys eventually met up. Um, having met Tilde and uh, convinced her to at least stay within the grove of the Gitzerai um, until you know the rest of the artifacts and sages have been collected. Um, and in such time, you guys would eventually find a solution. So, um, the last bit we left off on was uh, you guys had uh, settled Asterix until they here amongst the grove where you guys currently are. And um, Adaka Nalani, um, daughter of Herm, who is uh, sort of the uh, caretaker of the grove, lodged in his tree, just keeping him alive. Um, she has informed you that, uh, her brother Nurm went, uh, in search of the elders in the Plane of Materia, which is the last plane you guys, uh, needed an elder sage from in order to perform the ritual. Um, and Nurm had reported that, uh, the Githzerai they did find down there, um, were either dead, starved, or... Uh, blatantly lobotomized and that there were no elders amongst the survivors in the camp. Um, he also provided some details describing what looked to be remnants of an illithid stronghold. Um, one that signals some memories to uh, members of the party who ventured down into the long dark before. Only two of them but the, the implication that you uh, surmised from it all is that the elders were removed from the Githzerai camp and their knowledge was likely ingested by the Illithids keeping them housed. Let's go get some Illithids. <clears throat> Is known. Oftentimes, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Perhaps if we illustrate the destruction of all known reality, we're deigned to assist us. So, right now we're in that dwarf city, right? Uh, no, you guys are in the grove. Um, you had just finished speaking to Adaka, and you guys are amongst yourselves. Um, oh, I, I thought we already teleported to 
That dwarf city? Uh, no. Um... Are you sure? Because uh, Adam did a, a charisma check. Did you guys? We, we no, oh, no, I think, I think you teleported. I managed to take the plane off. ship to the... Because we were in the air thingy, so then we did it to the, the druids, basically, to drop Azrid off, and then we went to the city with the book itself. Is that right? Yeah, I don't remember That's... where in the plane we are, but we are on Materia. Okay. Um... Well, yeah, I think we went to the, the dwarves. Are you, are you just going right for the city then? That's what I, that's what that I was the plan, we... yeah. Okay, yeah, then. Uh, you guys can be in the city. Let me just... Uh, Get the map up. Switch to... Because <laughs> I still have it. Oops. Hey. <laughs> Man, yeah. Ah, memories. <laughs> memories. Let me just three of these. <laughs> <laughs> hey! Now bring him back. Let's go. Worm dirt. Do we do we do we like travel in time to when we meet ourselves? Oh, look at those friends. Look at those old friends. A moment of silence for the top for the fallen. <laughs> Which they is make just good fertilizer. Magic. Which is basically everybody up there except for us and one of the major mall guards. Yeah, I forgot who survived out of the girls who went with us. Not many. Uh, that's right. So, Zorch is dead. Zoroya is dead. Most of the guards are dead. I think one escaped. Uh, Zoroya yeah. is alive. Is she? Uh, yeah, is she? She survived. <laughs> oh. uh, what? I she got quite... disintegrated. No, it was um, it was someone else. <laughs> what happened exactly? Other people died that day. Bad shit. What do you think? We went to fight some aliens. Lots of bad shit happened. Okay. I forgot. I forgot. Grief wasn't here. No, I wasn't oh. here. No. <laughs> <laughs> I meant. I meant when we did this. It wasn't, you weren't even part of the group at that point. Yeah. I may have not even known you two guys. <laughs> uh, no, you, you knew us, but um. Yeah, so uh, you arrive back in Mager Mall. Uh, uh, since you've last been here, the city looks in much better condition. Uh, it seems that a lot of the uh, buildings and structures have been refitted. Um, seems seems almost brighter um, in comparison to when you were here last. Uh, and it's probably due to the uh, lack of illithid invasions. But as you stand upon um, a slight overlook of the city, uh, you can make out the various points and structures familiar to you. Uh, the tavern where uh, you had to pay for a wall that was broken, for instance. Um... That does not narrow it down. <laughs> Well, it's actually many walls and many taverns. Yeah, so the uh, the city itself is structured in three layers, with the bottom one being um, sort of along the lines of what you see in the picture there. Um, these vast, winding, uh, cobbled roads that are you know sort of following along the uh, cragging cliffside of the inner stone hollow. Um, and then one level up, you have the uh, noble district, obviously much finer, um, has, a, has a particular architecture. And then at the very top, you have the palace. Um, but yeah, so in the air, you smell you know, a mix of coal dust, grime, and a uh, tinge of sulfur. Um, but to mix that, you also get smells of salted pork, uh, fine grog, um, and you even hear like a, a couple uh, tunes being drunkenly sung along the streets as some dwarves uh, lean against each other, stumble on through. 
And the occasional way when someone drops all the drinks. <laughs> yeah, so what are you guys looking for here? Uh, well, uh, Doctor would suggest getting some rest first because he's feeling a bit tired. I his, would like to refresh all his spells. I think we should just keep going. We would have had to have slept in the airplane before we traveled here. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, you guys, you guys would have had a full rest. Oh, okay. Just fine then. The, for reference, I'm on a complaint shift once a day. That's it. Did you not do it the once? Okay. But uh, Arden got us here, so we're fresh. I just need to actually give myself some spells back then. Just go ahead and do something. You'll just follow your lead. I do not know if our reputation is positive or hmm, infamous here. We save the city. Why shouldn't we be famous? He died in the attempt. It's not our fault. I found that most humanoids are not logical. I'm sure if we just tell them that, you know, they died because they got unlucky or, you know, they were just ca cowardly incompetence or something like that, it's fine. I recommend seeking out the Paladin Zoroya. Is a familiar face. Weren't she a bit of hard ass there? Oh, can we just. Indeed. Let's just leave without it. Do you then know where to go? Yeah, we're going back to the, uh, the, the illicit place, aren't we? The one we destroyed? Yeah, I thought so. Best place to start, isn't it? Perhaps we should ask if there's been any interesting events going on lately. No, I don't care about any notes. parties or anything. Carnival's in town. I, was it? Yeah, in, in we can anything. attend those do later, Doctor. Jeez. Keep you on the plot here. I believe it would behoove us to find new information and news as to illithid sightings. We do not exactly. know where their current lair lies. It is I unlikely thought... that they would hmm. set up camp in the place that we had once destroyed. Arden so puts his like head up with, the, with his hand and in a thinking pose. I thought we had killed them and then we let one go. Right? Because we destroyed the brain, didn't we? Didn't we? The big brain. The, the mushy brain. The big one. Yes, the brain. Yeah, so then they all die. Except for that, that one guy. That particular group, perhaps. There is certainly more than one clan of Illithids. Just as there is one more more, more than one clan of Gith Sarai in Gith Yanki. That's right, but there's only one kingdom of dwarves, this one. No others exist, so don't look for them. One could only hope. We're well, looking for some friendly methods? No, I don't think so. I believe we are looking for any. I mean, they all seem pretty happy here. Like, without illithid, the, like, as in, no illithids happy. I mean, we could go ask the Roya, but we could go ask somebody else, right? The slow, languished uh, shrug. We could ask many. Why don't I do that instead of talking to Zoroya? You sound like you really do not like the Zoroya person. She's a liar. She's she is great. She's one of the worst. Well, you could say she's a hard ass. That might just mean that she takes her job seriously. She might be the best bet, but... She's like a hard ass and a... And a 
I don't know what to call it. Mm. There was the instance of being trapped underneath tons of rock for some time. It may have left a unpleasant remembrance. She does sound like our best bet, so I think we should go to her for assistance. Oh, all right. you, well, you um, talk to her. I don't like her. Fine by me. If Maybe nothing it'll... else, we would not have to re-explain who we are. We are Everybody no knows who we are. With the black book? Uh, a reminder to Grief and Kablam and others. They do not take kindly to magic here. Oh, well, oh, good thing I don't use any of that. That's wrong. I'm a doctor, so where would it compare to me? Understood. The only magic I really have is, well, locked behind something else. <laughs> How cryptic. Want to tell us what it is? I, I don't but, know. <laughs> it's, not, it's not that they are averse to magic. Is that w when you last came here, you came with Merchant, who bore pretty powerful curse and they didn't like that <laughs> well, they no, were what, what, they, what they really didn't like was the mind control powers that goose used because no, it, was, it was merchant spooky ghost that uh, skeleton bullshit that's what they didn't like well, yeah, uh, <laughs> sorry what, what was the reason the uh the door broke and the wall was crushed down so they saw a skeleton, skeleton and got scared and they ran yeah, through the wall like oh no <laughs> <laughs> me. Imagine okay. Arden telling that story to, to the, your characters right now for why they hate magic. <laughs> I mean, Doctor wouldn't have any reason to not believe you, to be honest. Mm. Oh, other than it's coming from Arden's mouth. Oh, never law. <laughs> Alright. You just uh, work in your favor. So, Arden, our leader, where do you wish us to go? Taverns, right. or to seek Zoroya. Zoroya, yeah, I suppose she might know the most, but maybe there's a new captain we could talk to as well. He might be she, he or she, whoever she is, they are. Might be good to talk to and find out if they ran into any ill vids on patrol or something. We can talk to both of them, we're not limited to one person. Well, <laughs> cheers to then Zoroya later. If she knows how well capable we are, she might be more willing to speak to anyone else who. She still hates us. Help us. Well, she doesn't hate me. No, she so will. We'll be fine. She hates everybody she runs into. That isn't, I don't know, a dwarf. That's the, the, religious. The, 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 the doctor would look for uh, Amanda to sort of confirm or deny this. Yeah, uh, this whole discussion is happening as we are walking towards the palace area. <laughs> <laughs> Just have an argument on the street. So, uh, so, how many people does this woman hate? <laughs> a lot. Their, num their numbers are legion. And then she was, wasn't she a real. I seem to remember her abandoning her followers or something. Or her letting them die. So I, don't, I don't know. It was a long time ago. But I remember her doing something real scummy like. So, there's that. Yes, well, we've done the same, so let's not uh, judge people here. It was an accident. We left her behind by accident, okay? I forgot. You woke me up real quick. I couldn't get it. Wait, did we leave behind? No, oh, no uh, he was more referring to basically leaving a little girl to die. Uh oh. Oh, here? Well, we didn't know, shrug. I uh, don't <laughs> want to remember that. Don't. <laughs> Don't remind me! <laughs> I didn't know, shrug. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Another one bites the dust. Bites the dust. <laughs> Luck putting the skeleton in the bag. Who would knew? Anyhow, oh. yeah, let's head towards whatever should be, obviously. He would right. follow his companions who've actually been here before. Um, so, uh, those of you who are here last can probably recollect where the garrison was that you were uh, brought to before your trek into the long dark. So heading in that direction, um, uh, you eventually stopped as you 
come before the threshold of the the, the second layer, uh, the noble district. Um, a pair of iron guard, ironclad guards, um, stand before the porch cullis. Um, upon seeing you, uh, they bid you pause, go halt. What business do you bear in the upper layer? And do you have clearance? We seek counsel with the Paladin of Zoroya of a matter of great importance to the safety of this realm and others. Business is imperative. They are clad. We are the Black Book. So you will know us. He was about to ask who you are, but as you say, Black Book, he. He seems to produce a reaction. That's right, we saved the city. Remember us? Yes. Uh, we we of the Ironclad have not forgotten the deeds of the Black Book Company. Who oh, that's good. Oh. I'm glad. If, if you are who you say you are, then uh, produce proof. I take it the black book. Hey, 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 titular black book. Here it is. The name is literal. <laughs> yeah, so as, as you summon the book into your hand, um, the vestige of pages appearing from a smoky black cloud, uh, the two ironclad guards kind of look uh, in slight astonishment before the one speaking goes, All right, that's proof enough for me. <laughs> Uh, Paladin Zoroya has been busy lately, but I can see how far we can get you. They, they'd you be welcome. great. You are welcome here amongst the city. Perhaps we should get business cards. <laughs> Kabam looks visibly shocked as Black Book is welcome somewhere. <laughs> you would be honored. You could provide escort. It has been some time since we have visited this city. We would not wish to be misled. It's a first for me, so yes. Of course. If you just follow me, then. Um, with that, he pulls out a, a small, thin whistle and blows into it. Um, Mana immediately clutches his ears in agony. Uh, none, of you hear, none of you hear any sound except for Kablam. Um, <laughs> Kablam, Kablam it, is, it is a stinging sound that catches your attention. Ow. Um, eh, they hit. <laughs> but uh, as soon as he's done, the portcullis behind him immediately uh, shunts and shudders before you hear the loud creaking of gears and mechanisms from the gatehouse above. Um, as the uh, array of grid iron slowly raises up. Come, I will lead you on. Kind of looks Come. to the other ironclad. I All right, so. Grilkim, you're in charge. The other ironclad gives a, uh, a small salute for uh, the other one leads you guys through the gatehouse and into the second district. So, it looks nasty. Not attacked recently, then? No, well, we, we have the occasional creature that crawls up from the long dark, but we have spent many a night without too many disruptions. Thanks, thanks to the Black Book. Yeah, it was fun. We were happy to do it. Is it is it true that you slayed over a hundred illithid? That's exactly true. We did it uh, single handedly. Well, once you are done talking to Zoroya, perhaps I can persuade you to tell me over a pint of beer. 
Hey, <laughs> that is a good persuasion, my friend. Um, as, as he leads you through the gatehouse, uh, you enter in, you know, so, somewhat of an increase in quality concerning the uh, appearance of the city. Uh, in this wealthy district, the houses and buildings all climb to two or three stories above you. Um, large buildings with many windows just towering above, clotheslines strung across. Uh, many of the dwarves here are garbed in uh, clothes that are lined with silver, gold, uh, inklings of bronze thread. Um, there's there's quite a sense of fashion. Um, it seems that there's not one dwarf among the crowds here who doesn't seem to have you know, at least uh, several dozen gold coins dangling from a coin purse around their belts. Oh, if not, you miss it. <laughs> um, as you're passing by, uh, someone is sort of standing outside a, uh, a dwarf bakery that uh, just offers you guys a platter. Free serving! Mushroom bread? Interested? Hmm. Didn't mind if I do. Indeed. May I ask what genus this was grown from? <laughs> we don't grow from geniuses. Yeah. Genius. He said. Oh, I see. <laughs> I suppose I'll take one, too. Has an interesting taste. Somewhat strange that there's a, a sweet aftertaste that makes it a slightly worthwhile experience, if you like mushrooms. <laughs> Wanted to rips off a, a slice of the bread and just stuffs it into a, a small vial. Tucks it away. I feel particularly uh, before, uh, before eating the rest of it. Mana, do you have any idea what kind of mushrooms these might be made out of? Hmm. Just from the my, flavor. What does my palate detect? Uh, given your wide knowledge, um, uh, these would be made from whitehead mushrooms. Uh, pretty pretty common. Um, not hard. Not very hard to grow them. Um, Kind of tasting it around, it's likely that you know they were reduced to a fine flour and then baked into the bread. Gives it that uh, particular texture. Ah, uh, yes, I do believe that these are Agaricus bisporus. You may understand them as white head mushrooms. No, it is a bit of a misnomer, as it is known. But they are more gray in texture and color. Mm. I always heard that. Go on. Oh, go on. <clears throat> Up to you. I had always heard that it was the more tawny or normal looking mushrooms that were the, that were the most dangerous. Indeed. My namesake, for example. Amanita phalloids. That's Amonita, how it's pronounced. Amonita muscaria, otherwise known as the fly Amonita. What did you call this, Amonita? Peace? Peace bread? I got no. peace. You call it. I think if you shorten it, it becomes a funny joke. The ironclad guard kind of hails you all. Enough of the bread. Continue, please. <laughs> He's just standing around this guy talking about fucking mushroom bread. <laughs> Ardent shrugs and continues. Um, after a little distraction, eventually, um, you know, three or four blocks of walking, uh, you arrive before the uh, familiar structure of the garrison. This large, two-story stone building um, built atop with, uh, you know, great large bricks. Um, 
upon passing through the stone steps, um, the guard stops. I am Udo Brickbrow. I am bringing the Black Book Company to see Paladin Zoroya. Um, and the, th the two standing guards standing outside the steps, each bearing a uh, prominent halberd, uh, kind of rustle as they kind of turn their helms to look at you guys um, before giving a nod to Erder. He continues to lead you on in. Um, entering inside, you enter a you know, pretty sizable foyer, which is also the mess hall. Um, in the middle, there are several long tables strewn about with uh, uh, various uh, members of the ironclad and uh, all ranges of uh, disrobe, whether armor's completely removed or partially removed, um, sitting down, enjoying, enjoying some uh, bits of grub. Um, but naturally, as you all pass through, a few of them turn their heads wayward to catch the crew of uh, strange creatures uh, prowling through their uh, <laughs> normal uh, comfort space. But uh, Erder kind of gives them an affirmative nod and they just go back to what they're doing as he continues. Um, eventually he leads you through a uh, set of double doors into what looks to be like an administrative hallway. Um, each bearing a, uh, a door and nameplate upon them. Um, leads you down the left hallway. Um, before stopping at a door that is marked with uh, uh, the nameplate of Captain Zoroya. Um, and he gives a knock on the door. From within, you hear a muffled, Come in! Is she always the captain? <laughs> All right, let's uh, open the door. I move Doctor forward. <laughs> ah, what are you doing? Open the door. So, as you enter in, you come into a pretty sizable office. It's about, you know, 20 by 30 feet. Uh, tall ceiling with a, uh, a ramshackle chandelier that hangs above. Um, around Captain Zoroya, seated behind a stone desk, are various lanterns giving the room a soft orange glow. She peers down at various parchments and scribbles with a quill. Um, as she looks up, her eyes seem to uh, light up for a moment. She kind of recognizes some of the figures, um, namely Monita and Arden. Um, before Erder uh, stands front and comes to attention. Captain Zoroya, these members of the Black Book Company requested an audience, being that they are Black Book, I took the necessary measures to bring them before you here. Zoraya nods in return. I see. Well, you are welcome guests within the city. You may go, Erder. He nods, bows slowly, and then uh, makes his way out, closing the door behind you, leaving you all alone with Captain Zoria. She sits back in her chair, kind of clasping her fingers together, seeming to. She has a look that's trying to get like a, a size of you all, even as she has claimed you to be guests. So, it's been quite a while, Black Book, and I see a uh, few of your members have changed as well. What business do you have in my city? Have any food without mushrooms? <laughs> we have some food in the mess hall, yes. Although mushrooms are quite a delicacy under the ground, I'm sure you would understand, Mr. Cobalt. Well, the doctor definitely has something he'd like to ask you. I don't, why are you forcing this on me? Go ahead. 
shrugs and takes his hat off in a sort of polite manner. He's like, I, I'm the doctor. As you can guess, I'm the doctor of this little group now. Huh. Well, I can see some wisdom has reached your crew, as from what I could tell, one was sorely needed. Let's get to the kind of soft trouble. <laughs> Hey, yes, uh, being with Adam for a while, I can see that he probably causes quite a bit of trouble. I raise my eyebrow. <laughs> His methods are, at least from my understanding and experience, a bit reckless, but Almost certain. None, nonetheless, he did free us from a sizable ill fed encampment. And for that, we have to thank his efforts as well as the rest of Black. But you did not answer why you are here. Ah, uh, yes. Well, we're looking for a particular group of people, but uh, apparently they've gone missing. Or rather, some have gone. Uh, what, what was the exact sort of state of the ones they found? Like, just straight up dead or...? Straight up dead, starved, or lobotomized. Uh, yeah, just kind of relay that information, but then, like, obviously mention that the elders that we're particularly looking for, we're not amongst that group, so we presume they're alive somewhere. We want to know if there's any sort of sightings of anything that's unusual that may stir some trouble for the city itself, as well as obviously be what we're looking for. Ah, I see. As you kind of gives a glance towards the monitor. So the Githzerai party that arrived here over a week ago is friends of yours. Indeed. Yes, I recall the report. They went down into the long dark in search of brethren they had been told had been left behind. I should know, I signed approval. They seemed a fairly tough lot. It is a bit unfortunate what they did find. Yes, it's true. Many of the Githzerai, as they were identified to be, were in various states of despair, or various states of despair, or uh, a lack thereof, freed from their mortal coil. It's a shame. That's how it is in the long dark. If you if you ask me, then they. Got off slightly easier than most, though. <laughs> Illithids are still a cruel way to suffer. Do you have any idea to what may have, well, what group may have caused these issues? And have you seen anything yourself? From what I understand, it was the Illithid that left ha that had dealt the damage to the Githzerai that remained. It was, it was, I would say it's a miracle at all if there were any for your friend to find. But we are in the process of rehabilitating the ones we have recovered. They are in a mix of critical states. Perhaps we could go and see them and try to help them. Sort of addressing a, a monitor in that regard as well. A monitor is oddly uh, tight-lipped when we're talking about surviving illithids. Conflict is clear in his face. Just go and push him on it. It's not right now, anyway. So, do you have anything other to report that may uh, help us find whoever did this? Unfortunately, there's not much I can give you, but I can give you give you clearance should you wish to speak with them. I'm not sure what success you'll find there, but perhaps you'll get a clue. 
Well, that's what we need, talking to them, going to the location of where they were found, and perhaps we can find something. Because we don't want any serious things to come of this that may even put the city under a stress. True. But since the Illithid invasions have stopped, we have managed to accrue some defense. She says with a small smile. Hmm, that's good then. But I shall prepare a writ. And she um, reaches into her uh, drawer and pulls out a slip of paper. This slip will grant you clearance into the medical ward. It's over I'm towards okay. the cliff edge of this district. You shall find it pretty easily, I imagine. The building is pretty distinct. It's made of a white limestone. Mm -hmm. She kind of finishes scribbling and of the swip of the paper, she extends it to whomever. I presume Doctor will be the closest because he's talking to her, so he'll, he'll take it. But yes, I've gone ahead and made arrangements. You are celebrated heroes of the city. Would this rich be able to get us into the long dark if we need to progress there? Um, that would require a separate report, but I could prepare yeah. one for you. I know well enough that you all are capable. It presumably will be needed, so if you don't mind, it'd be very much appreciated. She nods. With that, she pulls up to a second drawer, um, rifles through. <laughs> Sorry, lunch. Um, <laughs> but uh, she rifles through some uh, folders and documents before taking out a particular report um, and signing her signature. I will need you all to sign uh, right here on this page. She kind of uh, flips it over and exposes a section for uh, basically anyone to just... Uh, write their signature upon. This is just for bureaucracy purposes. We like to keep track of who goes down there. And I'm aware that the Black Book uses aliases, so you may choose to use those if you wish. I shall make an exception this time. You kind of quickly turn to oh, look at Ard Ardent. It's like, no corals with this threat? Oh, he's fucking comfy over here, isn't he? Well, the, the dots would have no problem signing it. I'd probably just sign it anyway. Yeah, come on, we'll sign it. All right. I presume everyone signs it. Yep. I, 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 I like to imagine that Kablam doesn't have a signature, but he just puts his hand in it and goes... <laughs> <laughs> He's got 20 in. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Amana, but it's cute. That, oh. Amana is last to sign, and when he does, he stands up straight and looks at Paladin Zoroya in her eyes and asks, I would know. Have there been visitors by the name of Rask to this city? She perks her ears. Uh, well, as you mention it, there was an individual by that name who arrived some time ago. But they didn't stay for very long. I know that they uh, stayed about here in the Noble District for some time, but Few days later, they just uh, they left. But this was a long while back. Like I, we're talking about several weeks. 
it would be wise to know that Rask is the embodiment of pure evil and seeks the destruction of all reality. Should you encounter him again, run. Also, the mushroom bread is quite tasty. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> she nods. Well, the end of all reality has never met a dwarf's, a dwarf's stubbornness. We'll see who wins out, but I will take your words to heart. And let the ironclad know if Rask steps, steps foot in this city once again. Uh... Do you know well, of any particular? Sorry, uh, do you know if he was uh, engaging with anyone in particular, especially in terms of authority? Mm. Not from what I can recall. Obviously, someone posing as Rask is a curious figure. Um. When they arrived, I had received a report from the castle that uh, this figure was supposedly someone from over a thousand years ago. I can hardly believe that. I mean, he, from, from what descriptions I was able to receive from the Ironclad, he just seemed like a normal man. Looks can be deceiving. Especially for one of his magical talents. Are you familiar with the creatures known as Lich. With that, her expression draws a little serious. Yes, we've heard of the Lich. Although, at the moment, it's a confidential detail. Hannibal given the panic-inducing th that would be. But no, the Archmage Rask is of the original Circle of Eight. So it's true then. Indeed. Be she... Wary. She sits back in her chair and kind of uh, has a moment of deep thought. Well, I knew it'd be tough when I took on the job. Here I am. It seems you have some experience with this individual. Is there anything I should know? They may seek the same that we do. It is imperative for the existence of all that they do not acquire it before we do. I see. I do not exaggerate when I say he intends to destroy all reality. I shall put my men on high alert then. Somewhat but... more altruistic in intent, but equally dangerous. There is also a celestial, known as Quile, who may be seeking what we seek as well. Their methods are direct, but I believe they mean well. Well, we have not had any run-ins with the Celestial yet, so I suppose we can be thankful for that. As I've spoke before, though, it has been quite some time since Rask was within the perimeter of this city. I do not believe he is still within our perimeters. 
but you might be aware of any plants that he might have seeded. Who knows what he's left behind? I am not sure. He did attend, from what I understand, a noble ball that was hosted several weeks ago. And there he made, uh, from what I can tell, a, a mild appearance. But that's it. that was it, really. He tended the ball and left. Perhaps he was fortunate. Quite hedonistic one, isn't he? It is far more likely that he did not find what he sought and moved on. Consider yourself fortunate if this isn't the case. We should not waste further time. We have much to do. Let's just get to this medical wing, shall we? Come on to the bows and let's see you lead. Soria gets up from her desk and stands and gives you all a, a small bow of respect in return. Let's then... let the ironclad know if you need anything. Unfortunately, I have tasks to do today, but I can make myself available if needs be. But I think you all can take well good care of yourselves. Alright, then we we'll just uh, go to this medical wing that you mentioned. Alright. Oh yeah, and I'll, I'll take the, uh, the the right to get into the dark area. Alright. Um, yeah, so uh, Erder escorts you out. Yeah, uh, find yourselves on the steps of the garrison before he bids you a font a fair farewell. Uh, and you guys begin to head to the medical ward. Yep. Uh, we can go anywhere else right now. Okay. Our best lead. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. So, um, following Zoroya's directions towards the cliffside edge of the district. Um, taking one of the main thoroughfares, you eventually uh, you know, walk for 10 to 20 minutes until you come upon a large white building. Um, uh, o- over the main doorstep is a golden emblem of a dragon biting its own tail. Um, uh, the various windows have uh, silky blinds and curtains from what you can see through the uh, iron-plated frames. <laughs> there are also bars over the windows as well. Um, Looks more like an asylum. Uh, as, as you enter inside, um, again, another set of ironclad stop you. Bolt! This medical ward is limited to certain personnel. State your business. <laughs> uh, Doctor will pull out the uh, right you got from Zoro, if that's right. <laughs> Gives the snatches the document, kind of reads it over, and then he extends it back. You may proceed, Black Book. Uh, I was going to say, is, is he the only one there, or is the like, people immediately when we go in, like actual staff, presumably looking after people? Um, these guys are outside, but um, he'll, he'll immediately follow it up. Do note that the facility is a precarious one. We shall find you an escort. <laughs> that would be most pleasant, thank you. Uh, with that, uh, he leads you inside and uh, hails the first person he sees, which is this uh, 
uh, black robed uh, dwarf female uh, who has, you know, uh, very long, straight white hair, blue eyes, rough pink skin, uh, has a bit of a tall and beefy build for a dwarf, um, and something of an oblong face. Quick question. In the time it took for him to flag someone down, would Amana to have had opportunity to cast a spell without too much fuss? Uh, yeah. Cool. <laughs> um, where the hell did it go? <laughs> Shit, I just had it in front of me. God damn it. Alright, um, oh, there it is. Cool. Sorry. Uh, he would like to cast um, Eagle Splendor on Ardent, himself, and the Doctor. Which one's the Eagle's one? This is advantage on charisma checks. Should <clears throat> you need to do some convincing. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, this... Uh... So you, you cast a spell, and uh, Ardent and the Doctor, you feel this uh, uh, sudden swell of presence. Call it a lingering simmer of confidence. Um, but uh, as, as the Ironclad explains to this dwarven woman your business, uh, she approaches you all. Hello, I am... Dr. Bone Grip. I will be escorting you. From what I understand, you are here to visit the Gith Zarai patients, correct? Correct. I see. She kind of notices uh, a monitor and then glances back. Well, follow me this way then. She kind of turns about and. Uh, leads you down one of the corridors stemming from this main lobby area. Um, you'll notice that many of the doors have uh, iron frames and iron mechanisms to keep them in place. Um, so while this is a medical ward, it seems that it's Keeping its patients very secure. Keeping them in or keeping people out? <laughs> um, but uh, you, you round a few corners before she comes upon uh, a section in particular. Um, uh, this door is sort of marked with a, a particular set of dwarven symbols, which... Uh, Ardent, you can make out to read um, uh, Mental Trauma. Um, and as she proceeds in, um, the room sort of opens up into this big space. Um, pl plenty of cushions are sort of uh, laid about while a series of beds uh, line each, uh, each wall. Uh, the room itself is like uh, you know, pretty pretty big, say like a uh, sixty by twenty feet. Um, and there, amongst the beds, you see a majority of the figures here. Uh, some manner of gifts arrive. Um, although, from from what you can make of them, a lot of them seem uh, just at a glance entirely despondent. Um, some are sort of slumped in their beds, sort of each one is clasped in these um, clean white robes. Uh, others are sort of uh, sloped over the cushions. Um, the it's it's really a sad picture that many of these appear just far gone. I did like what's the kind of like the best state. And what's the worst state? Worst state is just, you know, not moving at all. Just eyes open, occasionally blinking, looking up at the ceiling. 
Um, best date is one gets the eye who is sort of, uh, uh, seated upon a cushion and is, um, uh, seeming to write something down. Uh, what's this one? Like what's this one writing? Sorry. Um, as you sort of peer over, um, he is he is sort of writing in uh, Gitzerai script, uh, which don't think any of you can read it apart from a monitor. Um, but the the words upon the parchment that he is sort of uh, scribbling a. Uh, colored piece of wax against uh, just say repeatedly and repeatedly um, one hall many doors one hall many doors one hall many doors knock 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 because I see you not kind of oh, excuse me addressing a monitor, it's like, does this mean anything to you? I do not often see it here so written. The words do not sound familiar, though in their mental state, one might make the leap of assumption that they are trapped in their minds and seek the door to exit. Or perhaps it is an analogy of the planes with each door leading to another place. It's impossible to say. Monitor will uh, kneel down next to the gith that is writing and in as soothing a voice as he can manage even for him he will just rattle off a few uh very ritualized greetings inja uzun ustan covenant luath iglata ulu vareg lilvlos Unfortunately, you get no response. In fact, he just sort of shrugs your hand uh, from his shoulder and just continues writing. Is a way to kind of like figure out kind of like what is his state of men, his mental state, basically, and maybe what caused it. Um. Sure, you could roll medicine. I should have also asked: Are any of these? Uh, Gith Zarai recognizable to a monitor? Um, or are these natives? I mean, they they bear resemblance to a monitor, so it, it it could be said that you know maybe some of them at some point were of the people. Um, but as you roll twenty four uh, from medicine. Um, just sort of like uh, tracing around uh, looking for uh, you know signs of uh, damage or disrepair um, he he does not have any stitches uh, he doesn't really have any traces of uh, physical damage done to him he does seem a little malnourished but you've you've been told that uh many of them so were found star yeah that makes um, sense. But, so i can i guess i can assume that it's not a physical thing that's made himself like this it presumably would be magic i guess i'd have to do an arcane check for that or something um yeah you you you, you surmise that um like physically he is fine uh, but he is you know, as Amanita possibly suggested, trapped within his own mind, or um, 
is just in such a state of shock that uh, he hasn't yet recovered yet. This so anyway, boy's seen so... some shit. <laughs> any way to, like, would I know any way to sort of, like, get people out of that a bit faster? Um, Restoration would work. Uh, lesser restoration, though. No. Uh, lesser resto would get you part of the way there. Um, is there a full one? I guess there is. That's great. So, great greater resto is level five. That takes care of curses and paralyzations and more serious stuff. Like charmed. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Charmed, petrified, one curse. And lesser is paralyzed, poison, blind. You know the minor things. Yeah. Alternatively, you could try and find uh, keywords that sort of begin to uh, help him get out of this state. Well, kind of with that, kind of that, would, take, that would take some time. Mm. <laughs> I guess I probably would discuss that with the monitor. Like, what kind of keywords? Because obviously he's never been here, so he doesn't know exactly what has gone on here. And obviously I'm honest, might know a bit better than that. And what, uh... I was going to say, how much would lesser restoration actually help, though? Welcome back, Adam. Um... Would it, would it be, like, would I presume it would be completely fruitless, or could it's like, if we could sort of do stuff with other stuff, we know we could actually, like, get into a state of actually being responsive and helping us. I would, I would say lesser resto from your medicine check would probably gain you some clarity, but it wouldn't give you like an entirely sane gifts or I. <laughs> Sorry, I was laughing at that. Well, he's busy right now. Win. Yeah. Set off an adventure. Doctor, <laughs> are you suggesting that the greater restorations of magical healing will cure them. Uh, I presume with my medicine check, I know it definitely would. Uh, yes. Yes, so you. Needing the people is worth the expenditure of diamond dust. Amana takes out a fistful of diamond dust. <laughs> And lays his hand on the Githzerai's shoulder. Okay. This is a spell that I always keep prepared. Which is nice, because I get that at level 17, so I can use you as an excuse to figure out how I figure out how to make potions out of it. Alright, so as you um, bring the material component forth and begin to enact the spell... Um, the Githzerai uh, slowly begins to stop scribbling. Um, he just sort of looks up forward, uh, incidentally at Kablam, who's just standing there. Um, <laughs> and then, like, uh, his, his expression seems to uh, <laughs> uh, shift. Like, his brow begins to furrow. Um, And then, uh, after like a, a sudden snap, uh, tears begin to fall from his eyes. Ah, uh, what's wrong with him? Traumatized, I would say. By me? Id. There it is. Sta unending en mati folor dos lueth dos ta. Welcome back to the people, brother. Flesh dur, tears katarn, headless kesk fish. Long have I been away. He kind of looks up. You are you, among friends. You bear resemblance of the people. Who are you? Uh, 
the with Ilge Danath Nasai. I am known as Danath Nasai of Clan Nasai. Nasai. I recognize that name. My clan brother, Home Nalani, may have visited recently. Kind of blinks. It is all a web, a string of memories that are only now being woven together. Yes, I remember the man of Clan Nalani. Kind of looks around at the other Githzerai. I remember the dark crawling things Flem Ursh Nirst Ilithid I have seen many horrors But you see for them for now But he glances back at the monitor and then glances through the rest of the party. And who are you all? You are not the doctors here. <laughs> With a black book. Oh, well, he's the doctor. Black book. Kind of furrows his brow for a moment. You've been accompanied with your druid friends. Kind of raises a brow. Friends. Then he looks to a monitor. The people? Indeed. It is known that our need is great. Do you possess knowledge? Of the Druidic elders of your clan. He thinks for a moment. They were among us down in the dark. They were taken by the Illithid. I remember when the Illithid came into my cell, took one of the elders. The elder did not return. I... Wait, I... I have seen your face before. You were in the dark at one point, as he kind of looks at a monitor, and then looks at Ardent. And you were there as well. Empty M as well, indeed, yes. Yes. You went down into the depths while I was... Out of mind. And then there was a terrible screaming in my mind. So many screams. Whole cavern shaking. Hundreds, countless illithid crawling down into the deep chasm. And then there was a terrible crash. And then there was silence. And there I sat alone with the other Githzerai for many 
countless days, weeks, I cannot tell. Know that you are back amongst friends and clan. You are safe. But we must know where to find the elders. He shakes his head. I, I do not know where the elders were taken. Knowing the illithid hope seems lost for their survival. I do remember hearing, sensing where the Ilithid were intending to go. They were trying to find a place. A rapidly scroll through your notes. <laughs> <laughs> it's the dark palace, I think they called it. They were looking for it. They were trying to use the elders to find it, I think. A palace with door to every plane. That's here? Kind of blinks. Supposedly... I only can recollect a little from my time amongst the people, but such a place does exist. It was a dark creation forged by a wizard known as Melchsi. Well, do we know this name? Kind of looks up. You do. Then you know at least of his terrible works that has left blotches on this reality. Indeed. We must find this place quickly. Nibbled, they cannot be allowed to find what they seek. Nods. It will not be so easy. Such a such an artifact has gone unseen for millennia even. It is to find a single door in the infinite cosmos that is our worlds. You could spend years looking for it on one plane and never find it. Only Melchi possessed the means of locating it. Must find him and end his existence. There was a time where it was believed he had been felled. 
His work broke many of the great laws that keep reality together. And together they sent their agents in search of him and hunted him down. According to the scriptures of the people, he was supposed to have been destroyed. Yet, it seems, part of him still remains. In these artifacts he has instructed. Perhaps you could use the power of one of these to locate the dark castle, the dark palace. Poison goes where poison's welcome, as they say. Companions, I would know your thoughts on this. Uh, which artifacts do we have again? Crown, luck. Uh, crown, luck, the uh, invisible cape. Oh. Um, <laughs> at time one. Yep, the the uh, the, gy the gyrosphere, and then uh. One one of your members has the axe. <laughs> Should have uh, taken that off before he left. Uh, I feel like that's the most likely to find the place as well. Yeah, since it's a compass. Also, it's here. <laughs> what are you doing here, Goose? I don't see how any of those other things can help us find it. Well, we still have the uh, compass, don't we? Ah. Uh, Glenn takes up the devil compass. I don't think this is one of the artifacts. I know, but I meant finding other artifacts with it so we could find the axe if we really wanted. Uh, taking out the compass. Uh, the color on the bottom would turn gray, and the needle would just spin around. <laughs> uh, that feels inconclusive. Yeah, give a nod to that. Sounds like you need that axe thing that points to places. Well, we need to axe around to find it. <laughs> but, um, tush. I had a character I'm at a bit of a loss as to how to proceed at this point. Yeah, yeah. Well, we want to try to get the elders back, don't we? And they yeah, are where he. again? The, the prime focus and absolute requirement is to get the knowledge that the elders possessed. Whether there's elders still out there that have it or an illithid that sucked their brains out. We need to find that knowledge. Anything else is ancillary. Uh, out of character, just for clarification, uh, the elders came here after the events of Blast, uh, Black Book's last visit, right? I believe the, the elders were always here. Yeah. Okay. But they... It's more like they, go ahead. Uh, they were attacked uh, after Black Book left or before? Presumably after, because we before. had starving. It, it's my understanding that the Gith Sarai population here was attacked and enslaved by the Illithids. Black Book arrived, 
defeated the Illithids, left. So there's either remnants of Illithid and Githzerai slaves out there, or there was a Githzerai settlement that there are still Illithids out there that may have sucked their knowledge out, and we need to find the Illithids and get the knowledge back somehow. Yes. That's, that's my understanding. So, a little bit out there then, but uh, I remember Goose stuck his head in a brain and absorbed a load of knowledge. <laughs> Well, he could have said something at the time. Uh, well, people were too busy trying to pull him out. <laughs> I was going to say, does the, the just basically restored, you know, in any sort of way where these guys went with the elders? Um, he cannot say, but he he is aware that, um. They likely fled in um, their illithid craft, which they are uh, tended to do. Um, and you, you remember yourselves going into it, or Monica and Arden at least, going inside the uh, the actual illithid stronghold, and it basically being this um, sort of brain-shaped ship lodged in stone. <laughs> Well, the only thing we could suggest is go into the place they're attacked to find clues that if they like where they've actually gone, or immediately go back to this place that uh, obviously Arden and Amanita have been to before. Yeah, the the goal here was basically to to ask the people that we have available to us while we're still in the city here, and if we lack any leads, then to go check out the old stronghold. Yep, I would say that's a good suggestion. Or oh, again, go into the place of attack and look for clues. Mm. So basically, it's up to add and, and I guess you to decide, because obviously we don't have that information of Stronghold. It's, you know, it's part of adventures over campfires and just long hours of traveling and whatever stories would have been shared. <laughs> I, say, I, th I think... Doctor would probably want to go to the actual site they were attacked because, like, it's not determined that they definitely gone to that stronghold. Because, like, if you have at one point wiped it out, it might just still be empty. Well, if they were there before and then retreated to somewhere else, they might leave tracks or a trail or something. That's what I'm saying. Well, why we should check the uh, the place of attack and try to see if we can get a lead from that because it might not go to that place. It might go somewhere else. Yeah, we could just ask the uh, the big fish. The big fish? Mm hmm Oh, right. <laughs> oh, God, yeah, the one that was like a god. You, you could go see him. Yeah, I'm, I would say no to that. <laughs> <laughs> like I was saying, a player mark here saying is like, I am at a loss as to what to do next year. So whatever you guys think is a good next step, I am all for it. Uh, I'm, fortress? I'm on board with going to Illithid Fortress where we fought the brain and looking for clues. Yeah, I would, I would say the uh, the place they were actually attacked. So what's, what's Grief's opinion on it? You still there, Ezra? He might have fallen asleep. It's possible. Fortress <laughs> time. It's just been quiet for a while. So I might just doze off like he does. Well, we'll consider that uh, three votes. So, oh, wait. Uh, hello, Azra. You there, boy? I just realized my mic was <laughs> muted. I thought everybody was just ignoring me. No. For a long time, I was naturally quiet because none of the, what was going on had anything to do with me. <laughs> so, suffice, to suffice to say, this group of players would never ignore anyone speaking. <laughs> I'm tired. It's fine. So, <laughs> did, did you, did you, have you got a vote then? Um, what were the two options? I know one of them was going to a stronghold of adventurers, and I think the other was going the to the, the place. Stronghold of the, the Illithids that we. Well, what Arden and Amanita have fought before. 
Mm. And then a doctor would suggest going to the place of where these guys are actually attacked to see if we can find any leads from there. So it's wherever you feel, and then... Well, Honestly, where these guys are attacked is probably on the way to the stronghold. Grief is a blood hunter, so... If he simply finds tracks or some kind of evidence, or what, what have you, of whatever it was the attacker or the attackee, he could track them down. So. That is a skill most useful. Should head there immediately. Then. All right. So we want to go to the point of uh, point. These guys were attacked. Then. I have literally never had to use this ability before until now. <laughs> Well, let's give an excuse to use it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, I presume, so, yeah, I presume you're in so favor so for that. When, so when you're referring to the place these guys were attacked, you're referring to the... Get where they were found. Right. Yeah, yeah, guess you're right. Where they were found and stuff like that. Oh, okay, so I think there was some discrepancy. Uh, the Illithid Fortress and where these guys were found is one and the same. Yeah. Oh, okay. Even better. It's the same place. So, yeah, so. like... Stock up on uh, provisions, bring extra rope and climbing kits, and let's get going. All right, then let's do a bit of shopping before we leave. And let's not forget the giant wind tunnel that almost killed us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, uh, speaking of, I would actually like to go to some sort of a armory or weapon shop because I wanted to buy some more bolts. Uh, yeah, you could uh, readily ob obtain some. All right, then. Uh, I would only want to buy, like... Uh... Just say six. I've got fourteen left. Actually, uh, we, we have bags of holding. You could buy thousands. <laughs> <laughs> True. I, 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 it's, it's not my main point of attack, is it? Now, so it doesn't really bother me. So I'm not going to waste money unnecessarily. I, I've had twenty for God knows how long, and I've only used six. <laughs> uh, if we're still with the doctor, Gulban uh, would ask if there's any store that sells magical items. Um, she would say that uh, there are a few, but the sale of magic items within Maker Mall is highly regulated. Mm. That said, you could probably find a uh, decent potion shop, uh, perhaps some. Uh, accredited wizard selling useful knickknacks. Oh yeah, I wouldn't mind looking for more healers kits. Uh, what about golden wear potions? Well, one great healing potion, but uh, wizard knickknacks sounds good to me. All right. Yeah, I would just like to buy eleven bolts. Just how much would that cost me? 11 bolts, uh... Uh, let's see. Crossbow bolts are... It, it's 1 GP for 20, so... Oh, it's uh, fine. It's, 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 we'll just say it's like 7 silver. 7 silver for 11, uh... Yeah, sure. Um... All right. All right. And so you're looking for uh, magical oddities. <clears throat> and we'd also want to do a potion shop. And I want to try to get more healer kits. Okay. Um. Yeah, I'll say through your searching, you can find uh, three healers kits. I How much are they? Each, I think they're each like 15 gold. If that's the case, I'll take all of them. Uh, all right. So that'd be 45 gold. 45 gold. Thank you. And that's a uh, three, did you say? Yep, three. Uh, where are you now? There you are. All 
All right, so. Are there any greater superior or supreme healing potions available? Uh, there are uh, five potions of healing available. Um, there are there's just one greater healing potion, and then there is one superior potion. We'll gladly purchase the greater and superior, and well, all of them, really. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all of them. Okay, so two fifty for the five, two fifty for the one, uh, and then superior five. Uh, let's check the price on it. It's so one aspect of five E I never appreciated was they do not have a lot of pricing availability for magic items. Uh, I would I would probably. Gauge to say that it's probably like 1,250 gold. It's worth Since it. Each, each, each rank is a multiple of five. Yeah. It's absolutely worth it. All right. I was going to say, you know, who's getting what potion? The, um,. Well, oh God, what was it? Superior? Yep. All right, the superior is going to Ardent. <laughs> and Amanada will, Amana will pocket the rest. Oh, wow, okay. Don't give, don't give the five potions to anyone else. Well, you, um, however we need to distribute it. I thought everyone had some potions already. I've only got huh? one great alien potion. Okay, and uh, you said there was one greater available? Uh, Koblem has a great one. Done. Already. Yeah, yeah you you, uh, you you obtained the greater. Okay, you so know... six regular, one greater, one superior, which went to Ardent. Okay. You so know, healing it... just makes my action economy inefficient, so... Yeah, I don't know, but it also keeps you alive. Is life really worth living if I can't get that one attack in? <laughs> <laughs> You also have the most massive amount of hit points of any of us here, so... After you, like, you know, pissed away ten of them because you wanted to touch the ooh shiny thing. I mean, I got special powers from that, so... Wait, you did? Uh-huh, yeah. I did. Does, does anyone You're not, fucking lying! Does no. anyone not have a potion of greater healing on them? Uh, probably me. <laughs> then you take that. You put it in my mouth. And, and no, just drink it now. Uh, doctor, how many regular potions of healing do you have on you? Uh, I only have one great potion. I happen to be zero normal ones. Okay, so take three more. Potions of healing? Yep. Remember, I do have so that metabolism well, where I get yep. the max amount of healing. Yeah, so we, so we balance, that, balance that out so two people can shove a potion down someone's throat if we need to. You're the two medics of the group, so to speak. I'd like that I'd like that I have metabolism. Is it metabolism? Yep. Where is it now? Whatever. Oh, it's all good. Sorry, so with provisions and supplies in hand, we head to the deeper dock. Okay. Unless anyone else wanted to pick something else up. Uh, you did want to pick up more rope, didn't you, sir? <laughs> and Kablam wanted to visit a uh, tricky shop. magic store. Um, but yeah, you, you can obtain rope. I think it's like one gold per spool. How, 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 how much is a spool? Or how, what's the length of it? Hemp and rope is a, a gold for every 50 feet. And what would a man to sort of suggest to have for each one? Because obviously... Three, three, probably... lengths easy. three lengths easy. That's just standard adventuring. Not so, like it weighs, be... It's not like it weighs much. So that'd be basically three normal pool, uh, spools then. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right then. And mm -hmm. you said it was what? How much gold again? One gold each. One gold for every fifty feet. 
And Amana right. can spool off a bunch of extra rope as needed, but... Just send it to a spy to take it out your arse. Yeah, I've got some weed that actually turns into rope, but... There you go. Three spools of rope, then. Yay. Obviously, everything else needs to do that, and then we can look at the shop for Kablam! Alright. So, Kablam. <clears throat> you go in search of a trinket shop. Mm -hmm. um, so, the one that most people would point you to uh, is a location called... Um, Let's see. Uh, Uren's Haberdashery. Okay. Um, so upon stepping in, um, you are confronted by a site that looks less like a shop and more like a hoarder's den. Um, does anything jump out immediately of interest? Uh, well, I mean, there's so many things of interest that they're practically stacked into walls. Um, and entering through the door, uh, you find yourself navigating a very sort of narrow maze of just junk on either side. Um, and upon reaching the end, it sort of opens up into this uh, <laughs> um, hazardous uh, empty circle in the middle of the room. Um, and there sort of sitting on a stool is a uh, curious dwarf female who's sort of got a uh, large uh, inspection tool and she is looking down at a uh, odd-looking figurine. Um, very deep in focus. But uh, hearing your footsteps, she sort of looks up, and you kind of see the one eye just uh, magnified to such an extent in the um, inspection tool. Um, from what you can see, she's short, uh, has sort of straight blonde hair, brown eyes, um, but veiny white skin for a dwarf. Um, like, you can almost tell just from uh, her appearance that uh, she does not go outside much. Understandable. Um, oh my god, it's me! <laughs> sorry, Kablam also has the eyes of the eagle, so he essentially has one of those zoom lenses as well. Um, yeah, he'll strike up conversation uh, immediately, sort of like, uh, so what's that thing you're looking at there? Oh, this? Oh. It is a figurine I've recently acquired. What's it do? Supposedly it contains the soul of a trapped warrior. Throw it out. He appears. And she kind of gives out a toss. Uh, but it just sort of clacks against the uh, hewn rug. Is it broken? I can't get it to work. Uh, maybe I can have a look. I'm like an engineer. She kind of gives a squint. Well, if you activate it, you buy it. Sure. How much? Uh... I'll determine that depending on who comes out. <laughs> okay. And um, picking up the trinket from the floor. Um, does it sort of feel magical? Uh, I mean, it's hard to really say. It feels uh, like, a, uh, like an ornament. Does it look visibly broken? Uh, no. And as you sort of uh, move your hands around, it appears to be made of some kind of ebony. Uh, sort of like a whitish material. And indeed, as uh, 
she did say it, it's carved in the shape of some uh, rugged, uh, muscled figure, although the face is a skull. I'm deterred by this. He will rotate it around a couple of times, uh, giving it like a once-over, uh, essentially using the mending cantrip to see if that does anything. Um, it fixes like a few nicks and scrapes that might have suffered, but uh, apart of that, apart from that, it does not activate. Weird. Um, you could roll Arcana to determine the nature of these kind of things. Yeah, so you you recognize this as if if it is indeed what she says it is, um, then it is some a figurine of wondrous power. Oh. Um, so it's a it's it's a statuette of a creature or beast small enough to fit in your pocket. Um but you have to use an action to speak the command word and then you throw the figurine to the ground. Oh okay. So I presume she doesn't know this obviously. Um it, it does not <laughs> seem so she got she got the latter part. Okay. Is there <laughs> any inscription on it, cool. on the base or something. So it's a cool-looking paperweight, as far as she's concerned. Um, there are some runes, sort of like around the base of the figure. Um, uh, do you speak abyssal? Uh, no. Um, again, so the the figure, the figurine depicts a armored figure, um, seemingly clad in plate mail, both hands clasped upon a gruesome sword, um, and with a face of a skull. He seems friendly. Well, uh, I hate to break it to you, but I think. Whoever gave you this has missold you because it's not actually magical at all. It's not. No. I mean, it's it's really nice though. I'd like it for my ship. She kind of gives a squint. That's not right. My inspection glass here is detecting an aura. It is magical. Well, maybe your thing's faulty because mine's not picking up anything. Bah. I've had this glass for over 20 years. Never once has it failed me. Oh, he puts the ornament back on her desk. Uh, anyway, that's not why I'm here. Uh, I was actually looking for... Um, uh, I've been trying to like read a book that I found, and it's in this crazy language. So I kind of need this, like a, something that helps me read other languages. That's so. Well, I might have something like that. Nice. She uh, she uh, gets up for a moment, with a crick of her back, um, and she kind of <laughs> moves over to one of the uh, uh, piles of detritus and garbage. Just sort of begins rummaging through. Um, you know. Would an object scuttle about? Papers are shifted. At one point, a cat escapes. Um, uh, until eventually, she uh, retrieves what looks to be a, uh, a small glasses case. Um, and as she uh, blows, up, blows the dust off the box and opens it up, uh, you see inside a peculiar set of lenses. Um, they're spectacles with, uh, sort of like multiple, um, lenses stacked in various formations. Um, yes, this, this should do. This will help me read any language? Well, not every language, but most used to belong to an old archmage, I believe. Call oh. it Glasses of Many Words. How much? 
Oh, well, there are seven lenses here. Uh, 7,000 gold. Oh, that's, uh, that's pricey. <laughs> uh, Do you think I'm running here? I have to pay bills, you know. Uh, what if you threw in the paperweight there as well? I'll take it then. 7,000 plus the paperweight and it's yours. Great. That's coming out of the bank of Black Book. Because I don't have any money. <laughs> of course, you reach into your gold pouch and 7,000 gold appears. Oh my Magic. god. And they all have Ardent smiling visage on them. Yes, they do. <laughs> From the bank of Ardent. In Ardent, we trust. Sometimes. Always. Sometimes yeah, after yeah. an ellipses. He'll take the uh, arch magic glasses things and the little statue man. All right. So, yeah. Um, well, thanks. This will look great on my ship and these will help me read my book. <laughs> well, if you have any more money, don't be afraid to come back and spend it my way. Uh, he thinks about it for a minute. Um, you know anything that can help cast, like, helpful spells? Because I've kind of noticed, like, since teaming up with my friends, that I have a lot of spells that make things explode, but not much else. Hmm. Curious Dilemma. Got a really good explosion. Kind of rubs her chin where there's, uh, you know, so something of a beard forming. You'll have to be more specific. Ah, uh, as he casts his mind to think about useful spells. Ah, uh, yeah, stuff like the knock spell. Ah. Uh, Rope trick, detect magic, dispel magic. You know, a one that does that or something like that. <clears throat> um. She rubs her chin. Or that one one that does like a lot of random stuff. No, I sold that one to a customer a few weeks ago. A wobble wobble uh... wand. <laughs> I, I can't remember what it's called. Wand of... No, it's not Wand of Secrets. Oh. Now that I think of it, I do have an interesting item that might help you. She uh, goes back to rummaging around for a moment. Um, at this point, several cats come out, just uh, screech and run off. <laughs> uh, before she uh, fishes out what looks to be a deck holder. Okay. Oh, she's a Yu Gi Oh player, I see. What's that? I was given this item, I say, 15 years ago from a retired magician. Said he bought these cards off a lender and they didn't work for him. But Are you taking any out? You draw one, and an illusion appears. Okay. That sounds useful. Uh, yeah, I'll take it. All right. She kind of opens the lid for a moment and counts. There are 13 cards in this set. I will charge... Oh... 1300 gold for it. That seems fair. Ah, uh, sure. She opens up the bank of Arden. <laughs> Sorry, type out the price, please. 1300? Was it 1300, Sean? Uh, 
Uh, so you've never used them, right? Well, they have come used. I was told that there were more cards, but this is all there is. Okay. Well, I guess I'll test one later. I would advise yeah. not doing it in the open within the city. You might uh, attract the ironclad. And then it'll oh. be your problem and not mine. Go. So, is that all, Master Kobold? Uh, yeah, I think I'm good for now. Very good. Well, I'm sure you can find your way out. She uh, moves to a dusty, um, covered chair over in the corner and sits down for plucking this curious-looking book and beginning to read through it. Uh, so the other one was Statue of Wondrous Power? figurine of wondrous power uh, in the form of a skeleton knight. And lenses of the Ashma giant. Yep, you can you can write as lenses of Archmage, and then uh, it will decipher for you languages. Okay. Is this a a, a tune item? Uh, it is not. It's basically oh. an early form of like Google Glasses, or like tells you yeah. information. So, uh, with regards to the specific languages attached to it, uh, mm -hmm. it is. For Elvish, uh, Gnomish, Abyssal, Celestial, Draconic, Infernal, and Sylvan. I have this one. I'll, I'll, I'll. I got Abyssal, Elven, Draconic, I've already got Celestial. It's got something to do with Infernal, Grave speaks it. Okay. These, these glasses are purely for reading. <laughs> oh. So, while he's on the way back to find the others, he'll use the uh, glasses to read the inscription on the figurine. Okay. Oh, very clever. Um, the inscription on the figurine reads... Uh, whence thou hast encountered a foe of great and terrible power, summon, be, summon me by my name, Valgrath. Wow. <laughs> I just summoned it suddenly. Whoops. That, that was me saying that, not <laughs> character. <laughs> it's like, Valgrath? Bah! <laughs> no, not now. Okay. Yeah, then you'll go and find the uh, the crew. All right. Oh, when we summon that thing, Arden's going to try to recruit him. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, you right. <laughs> Stereotypes. <laughs> it's not stereotype. It's just what you will do. <laughs> I wish we could get a supercut of every single time Arden has just popped that question on people. <laughs> <laughs> so at this point, you all could have uh, reconvened an hour or two later after you've finished your shopping. Fully stacked up with supplies. The man gives the receipt for his shopping to uh, Arden. Arden takes the receipt. Well. Okay. <laughs> Is that it? Well, it's not like we're 
paupers. We're, we're rich folk, aren't we? Yeah, you can trust me to make good decisions. That's right. I always trust Kablim. He's never done a wrong thing in his life. And that's that's an ardent promise. <laughs> I suppose we don't need any more business in the city. Let's go to the fortress then. If you can remember the way, then by all means, lead ahead. Of course I do. Follow me. All right. I'm lying. <laughs> <laughs> There's two of you, so hopefully. That's right. We've got to pass through the fish cave first. Is everybody excited for that? And what is this fish you're talking about? We're going to meet old Mr. Fish and have a talk with him. Just be careful he doesn't get you his man feelers in here. He'll try to drag you into the water. Then perhaps avoiding it might be a good idea. It's a nice fish, though. It uh, uh, drags us into the water. That doesn't... No, it does not sound like a nice fish. He just wants you to be his friend. Have a Forever. Forever. On our way back, we'll see him. But we have important business, so let's get He's straight He wanted to go in the water, but I stopped him. Because, you know, he could have been... Became his uh, fish friend. I don't know. It is yes, then, known that it is easier explained through experience than through words. That's right. Just be nice to him. Uh, <laughs> so, as you guys begin your trek into the long dark, uh, of course, handing your paperwork to the... Uh, Guns and managing the elevator shaft. Um, they read it, not affirmatively, and escort you within the elevator. Um, and then, with a crank of the shaft, the elevator begins to descend down. The lights Go. of make yeah. all growing dim. Um, <laughs> as you guys uh, reach the uh, moist and rocky floor of the Great Descent. And it is there we shall call the session for. That's okay. right. All right. As always, thank you for running and for putting up with our particular chicanery. <gasps> and for those joining us this evening, thank you for putting up with our bullshit. Uh, thank, you. Chief Gun, thank you for hanging out with us throughout. Uh, we're quite welcome for the stream. And we shall hopefully see you next week. All yeah. right. Bye. Bye bye. Oh, I.